Anodizing aluminum, the ultimate technique for enhancing the corrosion resistance of automobile and aircraft parts, creating nanoporous templates for nanotechnological applications and making scratch resistant casings for electronic devices. Hello, my name is Maido. I am a material scientist and I have a few years of experience with anodizing. And today I will teach you the basics about anodizing aluminum, which is basically a three step process. Three treatments, anodizing and sealing the pores. In the following steps you'll need to use protection, like gloves and goggles, in order to keep yourself safe and also to prevent the contamination of the metal that will be anodized. Before starting with the pretreatment, I'll attach the aluminum plate on a wire made out of the same material. That way I'll prevent the contamination of the plate as I no longer need to touch it. This wire will also serve as the electrical connection in the anodizing process. Now it's time to clean away the organic contamination. Soap and water can be used to remove most of the dirt. After rinsing the plate with the ionized water, I'll do the final cleaning with acetone. Before anodizing, however, we need to remove the natural oxide layer from the metal surface. For that purpose, we dip the plate into a sodium hydroxide solution for a short time. The bubbling of hydrogen indicates that the oxide layer has been removed and that sodium hydroxide is reacting with aluminum. After removing the natural oxide layer, we rinse the plate with the ionized water and set up the anodizing system. In this two electrode setup, our aluminum plate is the anode and will be anodized. Be sure to connect the aluminum object to the positive lead, that is usually red. The negative lead is connected to the cathode, which can be made out of stainless steel. Make sure that these electrodes are separated and parallel to each other. In order to get a uniform oxide layer all over the anodized plate, I recommend using a stainless steel bath as cathode instead. The bath should match the size and shape of the anodizable substrates. In this case we are using a 10% sulfuric acid solution. Just be sure the whole substrate is immersed into the electrolyte before starting the process. Now it's time to select the anodizing parameters on the power supply. I want to do the anodizing at a current density of 2 amperes per square decimeter. Since my plate has a total surface area of 3 square decimeters, I'll need to use a total current of 6 amperes. The anodizing process begins when I turn on the power and in this case I'll anodize the plate exactly 30 minutes. As a result, a nanoporous oxide layer is generated at the cost of aluminum. The porosity and thickness of this oxide layer depends on the electrical parameters, type of electrolyte, its temperature and anodizing time. For example, hard, scratch-resistant oxide layers are done with type 3 anodizing in sulfuric acid at near freezing temperatures and with lower current densities. As you can see, the anodized plate has a slightly different appearance. This is due to the nanoporous oxide layer that has formed on the surface and this is only visible with the help of a powerful scanning electron microscope. After rinsing the anodized substrate with the deionized water, it is time to seal these nanopores, and there are several ways to do it. The most common method is hydrothermal sealing, which is immersing the anodized substrate into boiling water for an hour or so. 
As a result, some aluminum oxide is turned into aluminum hydroxide, which takes up more space and therefore completely seals the nanoscale pores. Another popular method is dipping the freshly anodized substrate into paint, which is immediately sucked into the nanopores. This significantly increases the metal's corrosion resistance and gives it an awesome appearance. Now I also mentioned that uh, this anodic aluminum oxide can be used in nanotechnological applications. In our case, we electrochemically deposited silver into these pores and then removed the aluminum oxide with sodium hydroxide. As a result, we got silver nanowires with well-defined length and diameter. My name is Maida and I thank you for watching this video about anodizing aluminum. Check out the description and be sure to subscribe by clicking on this red thing over here.